welcome to Seek Reality with Roberta Grimes. Joyous conversations about what the afterlife evidence and modern science combine to tell us is true about our one reality. You have nothing to fear. You are eternal and you are perfectly loved. Knowing the truth changes everything. Now, here's Roberta. Welcome to Seek Reality. I'm Roberta Grimes and I'm really happy you're with us today. This is going to be fun. You know, in recent weeks, we featured here on Seek Reality some guests who are really new to me, and I think they're new to most of you as well. And what they've all had in common was that they've been deep and interesting people and unique. And in, they all had in common something which I think is especially important nowadays. They've devoted their lives to seeking and to working to find ways of helping people to find new ways themselves to go deeper and to improve their own lives. And I love meeting these people because I've been a pretty sincere seeker myself, and I get how it feels to be motivated and to want to commit your life to figuring out how how reality works and how it feels to really need to help other people. And as we've been saying here, some of the most amazing people who've ever lived have talked about how this is the most important thing that any of us can do with our lives, to spend our lives on something that's greater than ourselves. And our guest today is yet another deeply sincere seeker, although <laughs> I gotta say, he swears a lot, but <laughs> trying to get past that. <laughs> He's giggling now. Our guest today is Ray Catania. He's an author, a metaphysical teacher, a theorist, and a life coach. He's the visionary behind limitless publications, limitless coaching, and scientific spirituality for the modern human. They're his brands, if you will. And Ray has written two books so far in his Awakening series. The first is The Atheist and the Afterlife, and we'll be talking about that one today. And the second is, are you still alive? Now act like it. And we're going to talk about that one in a later interview, and there will be some later interviews because I really get this guy. He says that it is his insights that make him a sought-after practitioner, but uh, yeah, that's not it. He's just extremely and spookily. He's a, how can I put this? He's really very psychic. I, th I think he's the most psychic person I have ever, ever met. His publicist calls him a sought-after practitioner in scientific spiritualism and the practical applications of metaphysics, but uh, he's just He's he's very psychic. He could read you like a book. So he has a thriving private practice where he guides individuals on their transformative journeys. And like everybody nowadays, I guess, everybody and his brother, he's also someone who's had a near-death experience. And he's an ordained minister with a master's certification in life coaching, another one in Reiki, and in, in meditation. He's pursuing his doctorate degree now in metaphysical par parapsychology. Ray Catania combines his extensive formal education with wisdom gained from studying under leaders in various fields, including intuitives, mediums, shamans, and energy healers. Ray, welcome. I'm really happy to have you with us today. This is going to be fun. Roberta, thank you so much. Um, that was quite an introduction. Thank <laughs> you for having me. It's an honor and a privilege to be with you. Okay, I've got one question. Sure. Don't you have a primary spirit guide? You know, somebody who like directs traffic? I do now. Um, there's a, there's a chapter and I don't even remember which book it's actually in, but it's, it's, it's a sub chapter, um, there the whole time. And it was there that I finally found him. And it's not that, you know, I, I knew he was there, but I didn't know exactly where, if you will. Um, when, 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 um, when I see things, it's of course it's in my third eye it's not with my eyes and 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 it's uh looks like a movie screen that opens up inside my mind and in the lower right hand corner because my guide uh and i i believe guides are at the the next realm not the fourth but the fifth and i'm and i'm just using other people's terminology if we call this the third upon death is fourth next one's five i'm just using that uh 
I can't see them as human anymore. I just see them as energy. And so he kind of blends in literally like he's not, I don't know if it's a he or a she or who it is. Uh, it, some mediums will tell you that they, it could be a relative. It could be this person or that person. I don't know, but I do know that he is there and he has guided me through some really bad times um, and gotten me out of some very bad like, situations like almost being killed in the bar like yeah right. like, <laughs> like almost yeah. being killed here and there yeah yeah exactly <laughs> <laughs> right yeah. because um i just a little quick story and a little confession to the to my listeners um whenever i have someone who is uh has given me a book to read and that often happens I always speed read. I'm a very good speed reader. I started to speed read your book, and within about three pages, my guide, Thomas, most people know who my Thomas is, mm -hmm. um, he immediately said, slow down and read this one. So I had to read your whole book, read wow. every page, and I, I did. get. I, fortunately, I had time to do that. And and it, when, it, when I'd read about a third of it, and I got to see – what it was like for you because you had all of this going on and lines doing these things and all these and and it was scary for you because you are so psychic i never i, I didn't even couldn't imagine what life was like for you he said now do you see what i'm protecting you from mm -hmm. because uh, what well, thank you thomas and yeah and, and and I am not psychic at all. I'm as psychic as a post. But the reason I am not psychic, I guess, is because he protects me from all of that. And for people listening, many of you are much more psychic than you realize. But your voyage is not to be psychic in this lifetime. So you ha your guide is protecting you from the kind mm. of life that if you read Ray's book and you see what it's like not to have a a guide who's protecting you from what he goes through, you see what, what it's like. So, yes, I read your, your whole book. I thought it was great. Once I got Thank you. What, what you're going through and what it's like to be that psychic, I thought it was great. I really did. But let's talk about some of your early stages because you sure. didn't really – you thought you were crazy in the beginning. Oh, oh, absolutely. Um, I was a uh, skeptic. Uh, the book's title is The Atheist in the Afterlife. So I began life rebelling against Christianity, which was the home that I was raised in and literally going to all the way to the extreme and being an atheist. So now as an atheist, I'm living my life certain that there is nothing else. There can be nothing else. I don't believe that. Um, I, I didn't see, uh, love in the world. I didn't see, um, people being nice to people. I didn't see people talking nice to people. I grew up with a lot of chaos at a young age. And then when I went into my teens and twenties, I sought out more chaos because that's what I thought was normal, right? You know, when you grow up in that environment, you take your environment with you when you leave and you expand on it. So, if things weren't crazy around me, I might make them crazy or just look for a crazier situation so that I could navigate it because I could navigate chaos. I, what I couldn't navigate was peace. So um, that's kind of the way I was living my life. And then there was this guide who um, would always be there for me to literally save my life um, in those terrible moments that, that you mentioned Um like one of them being when I was in a, a shootout in a bar and I wasn't one of the ones shooting. I was just simply in the middle and I get ducked under the bar and, and, and my, my guide says side door, side door. And I don't, I don't believe he's my guide. I just hear side door. I feel side door. You don't really hear it. You feel it. And, uh, and, and, and I said, what if I got to lose at this point? Right. Because I, I got to do something. And so I made a break for the door and I went out the side door and then there's a long corridor you have to go down and then another side door. So I didn't really know that I was going to make it all the way out. And when I got outside, my car was right there, which is a place where I absolutely never, ever parked before when I was, when I was working there. And it was always on the other side of the building. 
And I doubt I would have made it to the other side of the building. So it was like everything was in line for me to get out of there that night. And there's been so many others. Um, when I was very, very young, I swam out into the ocean. There was a major undertow and it pulled me way out to sea. And, um, and the lifeguard was, uh, bringing a bunch of kids in from the other side. Uh, not, I'm not in his view. So he's trying to get all these kids out of the other side. I'm all by myself on the uh, far side. And, uh, you know, my father's looking at me, but, uh, you know, and he's like, uh, been in the Navy. And I'm like, what the heck? Is he going to come out and get me? Cause I'm going down soon. I can't get back to shore. And I'm bobbing up and down and I'm waving my hands and I'm starting to panic. And, Here's my friend again. Uh, uh, at this point, I'm just going to call him or her a friend. And th they say to me, relax. And this feeling of calmness took over my 10 year old body. And I just went from panic to relax, swim sideways, take as long as you need. I'll never forget those words. Take as long as you need. And I just took my time and swam on an angle and I eventually got to shore. I learned later in life that that is what you're supposed to do in an undertow, but I had no idea. No one ever taught me that. So I, I was told how to get out of that situation. And I, um, being a stubborn, um, I promise not to curse, um, you know, <laughs> SOB. I just refused to believe that these things were real. Um, I always went back to my roots where you're not real. You know, I, 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 I make you up. You're in my head. And, you know, and I refuse to believe no matter how many times and times again, um, this would occur. And there's so many stories in, in both books of near death. I'll call those the near deaths, right? Because the actual near death was a real death, in my opinion. And, um, that happened when I was 20 and, um, there was a fire in my home and I was still living at home with my parents and my room was just above the kitchen and there were gas fumes. I guess the, the gas, um, uh, valve or something was faulty in the kitchen and in the stove. And so the gas, the natural gas was rising all night and I was breathing it in. And in the morning, my mom turned on the stove and, and it went up in a big uh, ball of flames and caught the wall on fire. But that wasn't really the problem that was put out very, very quickly. And the smoke also wasn't a big problem because it was put out quickly. So but what had happened was that I was breathing in gas. That was a problem. I didn't know this yet. Um, and the fire trucks come and the police come and everybody's there and I hear all this commotion downstairs and I try to get out of my bed and I find that I really most of my body is paralyzed. I can't move. Like it, it just feels like my legs weigh a ton and my head weighs a ton. I can't get it off the pillow. So I'm just trying to pull myself to the side of the bed with everything I have. And I get to the edge of the bed and I tumble out of the bed and I fall face first on the ground. Now, here's the interesting thing that I found or that I noticed when I hit the ground, I did not feel any pain at all. Now, I was watching your show, actually, one of the other nights when you had Dr. Hogan on, and he was saying how you're always taken out right before you feel the pain. And I was like, wow, he's right. That's exactly what I felt. So just before the pain, you're out of your body and your body is dead. And I was floating above my lifeless body. I was not scared. There was no pain. It was the most amazing euphoric experience I have ever had in my entire life. And, you know, I, I'm not in a rush to go back, but I'm okay when that time comes. Let's put it that way. And the light was that you hear about the, the white light, uh, is, is everything. It's love. It's euphoria. It's peace. It's calm. Um, it's every beautiful adjective I can possibly give to you. And, 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 and I was one with that light, my energy and that light commingled. And I wanted to go all the way across. And at the end was a being who I now believe was probably that same guide who said, it's okay, Ray, to come into the light. And as I went in further, 
the euphoria would increase and I really wanted to go to the other side. And then this was when my father comes in the room and he scoops up my, my dead body and um, he's screaming and, and, and he's distraught and he's yelling for the paramedics to hurry up and get up here. And, um, and I, and I had this moment, you know, my, my dad and I, we really didn't get along. Um, and it was, we, he never really put his arms around me as a kid too much. Or I can't remember it, any of, it. but this time he's holding me and he's crying me and he clearly, he loves me. And I'm like, well, of course he loved I, you. I wanted to go back to that. Well, you know, it's, there were moments when it was hard to believe that, um, yeah, if you will, but uh, so I wanted to go back. And, and I asked and, and I, I said, I can't, I don't think I can leave him like that. Can I go back? You know, and, and then I woke up and I was on the living room floor. Now I'm not in my bedroom anymore. I'm on the living room floor and the paramedics are working with their tools and their equipment and everything. And they're talking back and forth, using abbreviations, bring up the truck. He's got no BP, blah, 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 blah. I'm like, guys, I feel great. You have no idea. how great. I've never felt this great. I'm fine. And they're going, you're not fine. You're going to the <laughs> hospital. And I'm like, really? I feel I've never felt better. Did you see the light? Did you hear the voice? And then they start looking at each other. And I'm like, oh, okay. This is one of those times where I better stop talking uh, because they're, they're going to take me to the wrong hospital and I'm not going to, I'm not going to like that one very much. So I just shut up and I let them bring me to the hospital and do what they had to do. And then I, I you know, I came home and when the pain sets in, oh my God, this is another thing that I've, I've compared notes with others. The, when you come back to your body, every little ache and pain that you have in that body is magnified by 10, right? Because when you're out of your body, you feel nothing. There, there's just no pain, right? There's no, there's no form to feel pain. But when you come back, if you, you know, my, my pinky that I broke when I was like five years old and I never really fixed it, that was hurting. I mean, every part of you is just aches and pains. I was like, Oh, I made such a mistake. And my father never hugged me again. So yeah, I might as well just go back to that light. Come on, bring that light back. I want to do over. <laughs> do over. <laughs> I just wanted to get back. But, um, yeah, so the, the, after that, I moved out and, um, <laughs> being a guy who could read energy and I didn't know I was reading energy. I just knew that there was this stuff around me that I couldn't identify and, and didn't really understand what it was at all. And a lot of it came from the trauma that I experienced and a lot of, uh, self isolation and, um, more or less, it was like I was meditating for six hours a day, seven days a week, because I would just isolate and hide and stare at a wall. We didn't have uh, cell phones or computers or anything in those days. Um, uh, you can't take the television because it's huge and it's in a living room. So you're looking at a wall for hours and hours. And after a while, you can see what the wall is made of and you can see what's around the wall and and yogis that put themselves through this for 20 years. Plus, this is an actual thing that they do to themselves to to acquire this. I did not want to acquire anything, um, but it just happened. And then when I crossed over, I realized these energies were, some of them were of deceased beings. And it's their consciousness, their spirit, their soul, whatever you want to call it, that is we emit from our body that comes out of the body. Like I came out of my body and they can't, they are here mm -hmm. if they choose to be. And, um, so I started to realize that what this was by when I moved out, I got my first apartment. And, um, you know, I thought it was going to be great because, you know, I'm, I'm in my early twenties and I'm going to have parties. And I'm going to have girls over. It's going to be great. You know, we're going to drink all the time and blah, blah, blah. I didn't have one party ever, not one single party, because when I came home, I swear to you, that place was already filled with people. There was a party going on in there before I ever came home. And this is where things really got strange. So the, when, when I would walk into the apartment, it, first of all, it would look like somebody was there. 
just little things would be moved, not big things, not like the couch or anything, but little, little things that you might leave laying around paper, small items that could be moved. And I would accuse my, my roommate who never lived there of coming home and moving things around. I was not there. He, he took the apartment and fell in love with a woman in Brooklyn and he never came and I lived by myself. So, uh, and, and, and the TV and any electrical appliance would not work properly. I called my maintenance guy. He would come up and, and this was an ongoing thing with the maintenance guy. He hated me. I'm like, I, I don't know what to tell you, kid. You're crazy. Everything works just fine, but it wouldn't work for me. So, and then I couldn't sleep like the energy they would push off me. And, and they're just like, it's so difficult to explain, but you're feeling someone else's feelings. Imagine feeling. 10 people's feelings or five people's feelings or even two people's feelings plus your own and not understanding what's happening within you. So I thought I was completely insane. I drank heavily. I took drugs to sleep. Um, and that became habitual because that's the way I coped with this thing that I didn't know what it was. I just, I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm going to lose my mind. Here's how I'm going to control it. I'm going to put you guys away and I'm going to get some sleep because I'm going to drink myself to sleep. And I moved to another place and I said, you know, okay, maybe that house was haunted. This one's not, I don't, I get there. It's the exact same thing all over again. And you now I just, put, here. <laughs> yeah, I, I just gave up. I just gave up and I just drank more and I did more drugs and, you know, eventually, um, years later, it wasn't until I had kids, you know, I'm approaching 30 or I was 30 and I got married and had two kids and for, I had a reason to live now, right? Because up until then I really didn't care. Um, it didn't make any difference to me. And so I checked myself in a rehab. Um, I went back to college. I got a degree. I got a real job. Um, I sort of had this barrier between me and them. I'm, I can't help you. I don't know who you are, what you are. Um, you know, and we just kind of coexisted. Were they trying to get help from you? Did you get that sense? Yeah. Well, I didn't know that then, but when it was explained to me by my mentor later, really all they want is for you to deliver a message or for you to help them with something that they, that they didn't put to rest when they were here. You know, it's usually uh, guilt um, regret, remorse, those types of things that brings them back, that makes them want to fix something. But I didn't know any of that. And, but, you and, were, but you were literally like a beacon yeah. to beings, not in bodies, because they could tell you were psychic. Yeah, because I got a touch of that as a kid. And then when I crossed over, it was on. It was just like the floodgates were open right. and they the communication that's what, was... That's what I understand is the issue, yeah. Yeah, and that drove me crazy um for quite a long time and when i was in my 30s i had a you know i was productive i never had a drink since um 55 now and i um lived a quote unquote normal life um so when being, do we get to Jessica? I want to get to Jessica. Okay. Okay. I'll get right there. I'll get right there. So it's not until I, uh, my marriage falls apart. I, I love my kids. I still take care of my kids. Everything is great as far as work and the kids. And I decide to date many, 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 many years later. Right. So mid to late forties, I decide I'm going to go on a dating site and I'm looking at the different sites and I'm trying to figure out which one I'm going to join. And what they do with men is they put up a couple of examples of ladies that are in your area to hope to entice you to take out your credit card and, and, and join. And they showed me this one particular woman and there was four of them. I remember, and she was number two or number three, I think it was three. And I looked and I said, Oh my God, that's her. That's my wife. That's my <laughs> wife. And I joined the site immediately and I put my credit card in and I sent one email, only one email to her explaining to her that I joined only to send this one email and I'm sending it to you because you're my wife. You just don't know it yet. Well, how did I you know, you know she was right? Well, I, because you're psychic, right? I read it. Yeah. You know, when you're in a room with somebody and you, you say they have a nice aura about them, that's their energy and your energy commingling together and it feels good. 
right? So when I, I can look at a picture and I can get that person's energy, I can get their flow and it either meshes or it doesn't, you know, it's. Okay, and let me it, tell you a little story. Let me tell you please. a little story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 50 some odd years ago, I walked into a room and I'm not psychic at all, dark room. I, across the room, there was this man. He had a halo around his entire body. Mm -hmm. What are you going to do? I walked over to him. I started talking to him. We've yeah. been married for 51 years. There you go. There you so go. Who am I to question what you just said? <laughs> it's, 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 it's human energy. That's I all don't know it, what it is, but that's, that's my story. Yeah. And it, and it, and it either feels right. And when it feels right, it just, you, you really get that, that sensation of the, uh, the energy commingling and, and it, and it brings you peace. It brings you joy. It brings you love. And you know, that's the person. I don't, I can't explain it either, but that's what it happened. Yeah. It's real. Yeah. And it's beautiful, isn't it? I mean, it's just so yeah. beautiful. And we've been married and together ever since. And, um, so, but then, when we first start dating now, here's what happens. Uh, we start getting serious and she says, so what are your spiritual beliefs? Because we're getting serious. When we, I have kids. She has kids. We're going to bring them all together. I, how are we going to raise them? What's, what are we going to do? Like yeah, as yeah. far as that goes, exactly. right? Normal, normal stuff. And I said, I don't know. <laughs> I didn't want to say anything. I really didn't know. I, I said, well, I've been meaning to look into that. So, uh, what are you? Huh? Huh? You know, and I would just want to agree with whatever she said. Um, yeah, that's me. Okay. But um, she was like, she goes, well, you know, you should look into that and you should really, you know, try to figure that out. And then a couple of months later, my birthday was coming and she said, you know, for your birthday, I'm going to get you a spiritual clearing. I said, uh-huh. That sounds, uh, is it like a massage? And she says, <laughs> not at all. <laughs> and I said, well, this stinks. Uh, we're going to have cake. Of course we'll have cake. Yes. Cake. I don't know what this spiritual <laughs> thing is, but I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm whatever you say, honey, you're my wife. I do it. So she, she, she calls, I, I don't even have to be there. Apparently I, I was at work and the woman called me up and she said, I'm going to start now. And I said, okay, great. Mm -hmm. And she said, you might feel off a little bit for a couple of hours, maybe even a couple of days. And I said, okay, whatever you say. She says, don't make any life changing decisions and you probably don't want to have any appointments today. I didn't have any appointments that day. So I let that be. And I said, okay, thank you very much. And I hung up the phone and she called me back and she says, okay, I'm finished. And I said, okay, thank you. I really appreciate your time. And I, you know, I let my wife know that everything was great. And I hung up the phone and I went to go to the bathroom and I, all of a sudden, like the room was just, I felt like I was being pushed. Here it comes again. Like I'm in that apartment and here's, I'm getting pushed up against again. And I feel the energy and it's starting. And I'm like, there's just no way that's happening. And I, and I focus and I make it to the bathroom and I come back and I'm like, that wasn't, that didn't happen. It's all in my head. Sit down, go back to work, but it persists. And, and I start, I left work because of it. I literally started to not be able to function. And I started, this was for the first time that one of those energies, when I look in my mind, okay, and that, that movie screen opens, there's a human being there on the screen. It's never happened before. I've never seen a human. It was just energy. Um, now this man's got a body. He's stocky. He's got a beard, uh, mustache, thick black hair. And he says something to me. And he says, I effed up. I made a mistake. You can help her. I cannot. And I was just kind of stunned. I don't know what, what to even make of this right now. What is happening to me? And this was a Friday. So I go home and this episode repeats itself over and over and over all night. And the next morning is Saturday. I'm off from work. I'm home. It starts to happen more often and more often. Every single time I'm the slightest bit idle, there he is again. And by Sunday, 
it was as though he was there every five minutes and I could not function. I could not drive. I didn't know what I was going to do. I was, I, I, I remember being at the counter and I'm in CVS and I'm paying for my stuff and I don't know what I did, but I must have done something strange. Maybe I froze. I don't know. Maybe I was talking to the guy. I have no idea, but the lady says, are you okay? And I said, no, I am definitely far from okay. And I went out to my car and I sat in my car and I said, I'm losing my mind. I'm, this is it. Like, this is the end of my life. So eventually this is going to take over. I have to make sure I got my will, my, my, my stuff together. My kids are taken care of. Um, call my brother, make sure he's got all the paperwork. I, I'm going back to that light. I'm definitely not coming back to this place. And I want to, you know, I want to make sure my kids are taken care of. And I, this is really where my head is at. Now, I need help, I believe. I don't know where to turn. And you, you really can't make this stuff up. My future wife, who I'm now just dating, who gave me the spiritual awakening that triggered this man to come to me, is a doctor of psychology and neuropsychology by trade. My goodness. Went to, went to Penn State, then, then Columbia. Uh, she is a doctor. And I'm about to tell her that I see people that aren't there. <laughs> this is not going to go over very night. well. Right. <laughs> right. This is not, this is not good. Yeah. So, okay. I accept the fact that she's going to run for the hills, but at least maybe I'll get the help I need because she'll refer me to the right people. She's in those circles. She knows what to do. Right. So um, I tell her what I see how I see it. The man comes, he says the same thing. He's a stocky guy, beard, mustache, black hair. Um, okay. There I said it. And she's and now I'm expecting her to give me a phone number and say, never call me again. Call this guy right here. This is the person you need. Right. Right. That's not what I get. She, I get a completely different, uh, answer or, 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 or whatever you want to call it. Um, she, her perception is, wow, that sounds like my dad. And I'm like, what is it? What, what? You, your dad died 10 years ago. She goes, yeah, I know, I know, I know. You're probably a medium. She says, I said, what the hell is a medium? She says, you know, you know. And I said, no, I really don't know. I really don't. But here's what happened when I repeated what he said, I had given her the message and he was gone. And like gone. Yeah. And the, the feeling was just lifted off my shoulders. Yeah. It was like whoosh, gone. And I was like, this is the, what? And she goes, relax. I got, I know I've been to mediums. I've been to really, really good mediums. My father comes through. He's very prominent. He's always standing like where you say he's, he's forceful. And I said, but this doesn't look like your dad. I saw the picture. I saw the picture that, you know, that was on the mantle. I looked at it. it that guy's, Dinner. This guy had a beard, mustache, stocky guy, big guy. And she's like, that picture is so damn old. Let me show you what he looked like before he died. And she shows me a picture. And I said, oh, my God, you know this man? And she said, that's my dad, silly. And so what she just told me is I'm speaking to her dead dad. I'm, I'm so not okay right now. <laughs> I'm thinking she's the one that's crazy. I'm getting the hell out of here. She's nuts. I need a psychiatrist. She's telling me, I see you need a psychiatrist. <laughs> um, so, but what she says is actually refreshing. She goes, here's the deal. A medium that's very prominent, very powerful coming to town. She, she travels around the world. She's going to be in town, uh, on uh, this week and I'll book us a couple of, um, uh, appointments with her. And I said, okay, you can compare notes and, you know, maybe it's right. Maybe it's wrong. Who knows? You'll find out, you know, she's smart. She's, she knows how to get me to do anything. So I go in and I meet with the woman and I say, I say exactly how it happens. And I, and I walk in and, and she says, hi, Ray. And no, I, she said, hi. And I said, I'm Ray. And she said, oh, you're that Ray. And I was like, okay, I don't know what that exactly means. Um, she goes, tell me what's going on, Ray. I said, well, I'm completely insane. I see people that aren't there. 
they sometimes could talk to me. She goes, tell me how it happens. And I said, okay, so I feel the vibrations. Sometimes they're up here and they're tingly. Sometimes they're lower and they're uh, heavier frequency. And I, I know that it's serious because it feels serious. And then the, the, the movie screen opens up and I go through the whole step by step as I see it. And she says, stop. And I said, what? She goes, that's exactly the way I see them too. And my parents thought I was schizophrenic and they put me in a hospital for a very long time. And it took me a long time to get out of that hospital. Relax. You're not crazy. There's dead people and they're among us. It's okay. And I was so relieved in that moment, but at the same time, I now didn't know what or who I was and that it was really um, frightening from a different angle. The insanity I kind of understood because it was medical. Not that that would have been better. It wouldn't have, but at least I understood the, the, what that was. And here I am in a realm of something that I have no understanding of, no control over, and I am petrified of it. But she makes me feel better. She takes me under her wing for a year and she teaches me um, how to control it, how to understand it, um, that it was, it was really refreshing to know that people thought she was crazy too, you know, because that, um, not that that was a good thing, but it made me feel okay about my situation. Okay. So maybe I'm not crazy and, and we're both onto something here that's, you know, meant to be. And now all of a sudden I'm starting to talk like one of these people and I'm meant to be, I don't believe in meant to be. Oh my God, who am I? But, um, thank God she was there. Um, and thank God my wife was there because that altered the trajectory of the rest of my life. It's a gift. Um, well, gifts are good to receive. It's a gift. Um, yeah, I, 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 yeah, it's, it's a, it's a tough gift because it comes with responsibilities and it's right. not a pleasant thing. Um, although you can give something pleasant to another human being that they can't otherwise, uh, get, which I will admit is fantastic, but it's, I don't practice it because it's extremely taxing. It's, you have to allow that person's energy to literally flow through you and to come to uh, deliver that information to the other person. And it comes with their emotions attached, right? Yeah. Because our energy is our emotion vibrating on a specific frequency. If we're happy, it's higher and tingly, right? And if it's, we feel heavy, it's lower and deeper. And it's a lot more often than not, it's heavy, because they, they miss this person. They regret something they said or did or didn't say or something like that. It's always something like that. It's never, Hey, how you doing? I love you, honey. You know, it's just not like that because they wouldn't be so persistent if it wasn't really, really important. Like the message I was getting, we didn't know that yet, but that message eventually when four other messages came, we put them all together and it saved a person's life in her family. So it was a big deal. That's why he was there and he was not going to go away until I gave her the message so she could bring it to her family member. And that's like more than I agreed to ever do in this relationship. Um, so it's, uh, it's a, it's a strange place to be. It's, um, some would call it a gift. I think to a degree, yes, it is. Um, but then there, it's a, it's a double edged sword at the same time because it's, I just found happiness in my life after, uh, half my life is over. I had a spiritual awakening at 50. I just got rid of the negative emotions. I don't, I experience them, but I don't, they don't stay with me for days or hours anymore. I can just let them flow through me and. I don't want to take them on from somebody else because they ha they stay with me for hours. They, it's not like they just, you know, you can wash it off in the shower. This energy is now is commingled with mine and it's going to stay that way for a while. It's uh, a form of quantum entanglement or, or, or yeah, quantum entanglement where our. Uh, exactly. Yes. Yeah. 
and, and it, it's, it, he becomes a part of me temporarily and I become a part of him temporarily and we go each other's ways, but we still have those, that energy attached. And it's much more than like you and I were be in a room. It's because they, I have to actually let them completely submerge themselves in me to go through. So I can't, um, I can't do it on a regular basis. And I, and I don't, I don't think that's my path. I think yeah. that my path is more about helping others achieve their spiritual awakening. Um, mine was dropped on my head, but th- theirs doesn't have to be. <laughs> Um, there's a, there's a way to progress through this and have your own without having the negative experiences, without having, um, you know, the, the, the trauma and all the rest of it. And that's what I try to give to people now. I think that's my calling. But it's perhaps saying it's a blessing or a gift is strong. It's more like each of us comes into this body with a combination of talents Hmm. in a mix everybody is a little bit psychic yeah which is why thomas said see what i'm protecting you from i mean i conceivably can probably if he were not there i could get messages from other beings he's protecting me from getting any of that yeah and because that's not my voyage i shouldn't be receiving any messages at all and other people people listening to us talk um probably are being protected too because it's not their calling Mm. um you are not being protected at all from your guide Mm -hmm. by your guide because your your calling is to be receiving these messages Um, yeah I i believe it took this to make me a believer because i was such a skeptic and didn't believe in anything that it took something of this magnitude to get me to pay attention and believe. Yes. Yes. Excuse me. Yes. You were extremely, (laughs) extremely skeptical about just about everything. I was fighting tooth and nail all the way down until I just couldn't fight anymore. Yes. Yes. I gave in. You had to be hit over the head by many kinds of clubs. Let's just. Oh yeah. (laughs) Many, many. (laughs) Well said. <laughs> but, no, oh, but, I, but still, you're, you were very frank about your early life, which was a wonderful thing. I mean, many people protect parts of themselves. There are places they won't go. Yeah. You, in your book, you protected other people. Mm-hmm. You, were, you made safe zones for them, but not for yourself, which I thought was quite admirable you you wanted people to see your your own nakednesses but not not other people's nakednesses which i i thought was quite thank admirable. you i um, think that was that definitely was my goal um i think that if i'm going to come forth and and say these things um i have to be a thousand percent truthful on all levels otherwise you know that's it's it's just that is the story of who I was that brought me to who I am. I can't give you the who I am without that background, because if it wasn't for those things, then I'm not this guy today. Right. And I've got no business being on this show talking to you about anything because I, that part of the story created this part of the story. It was the bad that created the good, not, it wasn't all, you know, good. Um, and and it it's not supposed to be all good. It's supposed to be a challenge, but it's supposed to be um anything can be good or bad, right? We can decide what's good and bad because we make that decision in our minds and we can choose what's good and what's bad. Uh Shakespeare said it the best, nothing's either good nor bad, but thinking makes it so. It's from Hamlet, and it's so profound. We think it that's bad. We think that's good what if everything was just kind of like in the middle (laughs) that's right right that's that's that flow state that's that flow state i love being there i don't want to go too high this side too high this side i like being right there so if a car cuts me off i remember i was driving and i had the little one in the back and this car ran the stop sign i swerved that away i swerved back in and i of course cursed because that's what i do 
And, but That's then, best, I think. <laughs> my editor is like, you want to tone this down a bit? I was like, nah, that, that's yeah. me. Sorry. <laughs> um, so, you know, and she's like, what happened? Cause she didn't really know what happened. She was, and, and I said, well, that car almost hit us. And she goes, so you're mad. And I said, well, no, I'm not mad now, but no one's trying to hit us now. But back there a block ago, I was mad. And she's like, oh, but you're not mad now. I said, no, I'm not mad now. And she got it. Like she really, she processed that. And that's, you know, now when I was a kid, that would have been a completely different situation. That, that argument would have went on for days and my father would have brought it home and told people at work and told people in my family and spoke about it all night and been angry and blah, 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 blah. Right. And I, I can just let that flow and just forget about it. Right. And that I experience it and then I let it go. That's the sign of a higher vibration individual, right? Yeah. That's what I try to be. I hate to say it, but we've already run out of time. And I have other things I wanted to talk to you about, about this book, never mind the next one. So we'll have to do this again soon. I would love to. Thank you so very much. Well, let's, let's hear from, from you what you want people to take away from what we've been talking about. I think that the biggest takeaway here is that this state of flow uh, post um, spiritual awakening for me has shown me that um, we really are all one. We come from this one energy, this one source, call it God, universal collective, universe, whatever term you wish to use. We all come from that and we're all one being. So when you, to hurt somebody else is you're hurting yourself and you've really got to grasp that concept now because, you know, when you cross over, it's too late. You're going to try to come back and you're going to say, I regret, I'm, I got remorse. I got guilt. And you're going to look for somebody like me who's going to tell you, I'm not talking to you because I'm crazy. Sorry. Just go by. <laughs> and you're not going to get that message across. Do live that. That's the title of the second book. You're still alive now. Act like it. Be wonderful to people. Be especially those that you love. I never let any of my kids or my wife walk out that door without me telling them I love you. I have to say that. Maybe I won't be here when they come back. Who knows? I'm not going to be on the other side with the regret or remorse. I don't want to be that person. And if we live like that, we're going to be better people, I think, I hope, to each other. Beautifully, beautifully said, dear. Thank you. My dear friends, once again, we've come to the end of our time together, but um, we will have right back. I, I think I, I just think we've discovered a new friend here. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. Thank and, you. And once again, everyone, this has been Seek Reality with Roberta Grimes. I'm very glad you, that you were with us today. And please never forget that you are a powerful, eternal being. You never began. You never will end. And when you get that, it changes everything in your life for the better. And next week, our guest will be our wonderful friend, Dr. R. Craig Hogan. He'll be with us for the 44th time in more than a decade of Seek Reality episodes. We have him on you know, four or five times a year, and he always has something new to talk about. And next week, we, we've discussed, well, you know, what, how can we make this another time when we talk about something new? And we're going to talk about the fact, and this is peculiar, that um, we have done now a combined between us 80 years of investigating the afterlife and not wow. any ease, the true afterlife. And th there really is an afterlife. It is not, frankly, it's totally real. It is more real than what you see around you now. But we find most people just don't want to know about it. They're still scared of it. Yeah. They know why. And we're, we're going to try to talk about it and try to discover why. And we're going to discuss that next week. So I think this is going to be pretty interesting. Please join us. And this week we've been talking with a re I think he's a really astonishing guy myself. We have a lot more to talk about Ray, uh, to talk with Ray about. 
Ray Catania is an author. He's a metaphysical teacher. You can see why. He's a theorist and a coach, and he's the visionary behind limitless publications, limitless coaching, and scientific spirituality for the modern human. Ray Catania has written the first two books in his Awakening series called The Atheist and the Afterlife, and we may just spend another another session talking about this book, never mind the next one, which is called You're Still Alive, Now Act Like It. And I think we've got maybe a couple of times to talk about that one, too. I would love that. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you saying that, too. Thank you. If you can get past the... No, I warn you, if the F word is, I'm going to say that word, fuck. I can say that word too, see? There you it's, go, it's, just get it out. <laughs> every third, yeah, I'm a grown up, but I can, I can still say that word. And every third or fourth sentence, he says it because he just says it. And you'll be fascinated to learn what it feels like to be a genuinely gifted and totally out of control natural psychic, which is what he thinks <laughs> in most of this first book. He doesn't get it. He doesn't understand what it is and what to do with this gift. But watching him learn what it is and get control of it in this very frank autobiography is all by itself, I think, fascinating. And and he does learn what it is and figure it out. And and frankly, this this wonderful woman that he finds and he lives with and finds joy with all by itself, that is a beautiful reason to read this book. I recommend it, frankly, without reservation. The Atheist and the Afterlife, you can get it through Amazon. And now, of course, it's time once again to mention that Seek Reality Online is your one-stop resource for all things afterlife. Just go to SeekReality.com and start to learn for yourself that your own reality really is eternal and it's all good news. So why wouldn't you want to learn more about it? Learn the ultimate truth from our dear friend Craig Hogan, who is the president of Seek Reality Online and your worldwide expert on all things afterlife. And... Teachingsbyjesus.com is your one-stop resource for all the beautiful divine truths that are brought to you in love, in perfect love, by the greatest teacher of all, Master Jesus. Now it really is his turn. As you know, Christianity, the religion that was created by the Roman Emperor Constantine 300 years after Jesus ascended, didn't come from Jesus. They just took his name and stuck it on a religion. But now, finally, as that religion dies, Jesus can finally truly come alive for all of us. He can come alive and he can tell us the truth. And you would be surprised the truth has nothing to do with the religion. And actually, I think we've just about run out of time. You know what my books are. I don't have to talk about those. If you want to talk with me about anything at all, you can always contact me through the green contact block on Roberta Grimes, which is called robertagrimes.com. I'm trying to think what else I usually say in this. I usually talk for too long. My my dear, wonderful, beautiful engineer, Sam, tells me, um, what else should I tell you? There's if you you can um, find more than 500 past episodes of Seek Reality, wherever audio podcasts are found, there's an app wherever apps are found, and that's for free, too. You can also find all our new video episodes on Roku, Fire Stick, YouTube, and elsewhere. And meanwhile, this has been Seek Reality with Roberta Grimes. Please enjoy, make the most of this coming week in our one reality, never forgetting, always knowing that you are a powerful, eternal being, and you, most of all, in this entire universe, you in particular are are infinitely, perfectly, divinely and forever loved. You've been listening to Seek Reality with Roberta Grimes. Roberta blogs and answers questions at robertagrimes.com. Join us every week as we explore what the afterlife evidence and modern science combine to tell us is true about the one reality we all share. Knowing the truth changes everything. Everything.